How does Aaron Rodgers play against Seattle this weekend? I think he's like at his best when he's like in FU mode, right? Like, and I think like, I mean, he, no, but how does he get to the point where he's allowed to play? Not how does he play? Do you think he's playing against Seattle? I do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and look, like, like I will say this, I, I mean, 100% like this is like, if he has symptoms, whatever, I don't know about that. Right. Like that's possible that, you know, like the timing doesn't like he has another positive test, whatever. Right. Like, so he's got to get through the protocols first, but I think if he clears on Saturday, then I think he's going to play. And just having talked to Packers coaches about this over the last few days, I, I can tell you unequivocally, if they, one of them said to me, if there's anyone in the league who can play without practicing during the week, it's Aaron Rodgers. And so, you know, they're going to get Aaron Rodgers ready to play, um, you know, over the next few days. And I think where this would have gotten interesting, Dan, is if Jordan Love had played really well against the Chiefs, maybe organizationally then they might say, let's get a second look at him. You know, if they win that game, maybe they have a little more breathing room now. L let's take another look at what Jordan Love looks like out here. We can gather some valuable information and we can give Aaron the benefit of another week off. Mm. But I think based on the way Jordan, the way Jordan Love played now, like kind of the urgency of the situation the Packers are facing, they're going to do everything they can to get him ready. I think he's going to start on Sunday so long as he clears the protocols. Uh, does this affect his status long term with the Packers, in your opinion? I think yes. Um, their handling of this situation is going to be really important. Now, the league's investigating this, right? So they're requesting all the video and they're like trying to gather every piece of like every piece of information they can about the way this went over the last three months. I think, you know, one of the, one of the interesting pieces of this is the press conference piece of it, where like the Packers, if you look at the way they handle the press conferences, right. You can tell what happened there. Like you don't need me to tell you they put every other unvaccinated player on zoom. Every single other unvaccinated player was on zoom. Only Aaron Rodgers was going to the, going to the podium without a, without a mask on. So the Packers can very easily say to the league, we told him, look, like every other play, every one, every other one of our guys is, is up there. Right. So how do they handle this now? Do they fall on the sword and say, you can talk to Aaron. We've got our players back. Or do they say, look at the way we handle every other one of our players. I think that right there, because Aaron takes everything so personally, I think that right there is important because if Aaron feels like he's being thrown under the bus by the by the Packers, all that goodwill over the three last three months, I think goes out the window. If the Packers fall on the sword here, maybe it helps them, right? Mm -hmm. Like if the Packers show we have your back, like, hey, Aaron, look, we traded for Randall Cobb. We went and got Whitney Merciless and Jalen Smith in the middle of the season. We're we're acting in a different way. We're winning with you. And now we have your back when you're in a really kind of tough spot. I think that could end up going a, 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 a long way. So I don't think it's like how like the on-field piece goes. I think it's how the NFL investing investigation goes that could really wind up affecting where that relationship is when we get to February and March.